REITs, 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 Real Estate Investment Trust. Very important to income investors such as myself. I invest in REITs because I know real estate is an excellent return on equity, but I'm terrible at DIY. See this thing over there? Must have took me two hours to put that up. But with possible rising inflation and therefore possible rising interest rates, people are very scared of buying REITs right now. So let's discuss whether REITs are a good investment going into this environment, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm still buying them. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. Welcome back everyone, my name is Paul. I'm relatively new to investing and I've created an income investing portfolio here on Trading212. I started documenting my investment journey here on YouTube as an experiment to see if it really is possible to make money in the stock market. I cannot believe that my investment style right now is considered as an alternative way of investing. In today's investing environment, I try to avoid all of the hype and try and buy good companies at good valuations. And right now, everyone seems to be scared of buying real estate investment trusts. So does that make these a good opportunity to buy or has everyone else got it right? Real estate investment trusts are stocks that invest solely into buildings. They buy all sorts of different buildings like gyms, cinemas, golf clubs, big towers, offices, anything you can think of. And one of the most important things for dividend growth investors is that REITs have a tax advantage that requires them to pay 90% of their income out to shareholders in the form of dividends. This makes them very popular for income investors, but the rumor is that makes it worse for capital appreciation. That probably isn't true though, because REITs have outperformed the market for the past 20 years. But there is a dark shadow being cast over REITs right now in the form of rising interest rates. REITs make up a lot of their capital by issuing shares and taking on a lot of debt. And when interest rates rise, debt gets more expensive. This means that going forward, real estate investment trust margins could get a lot slimmer. REITs are also taking a beating because even though we've been locked up for the past year, there's still the belief that people don't want to leave their house anymore. This is because Zoom has stopped people going to work and Amazon is destroying malls. Two things that are very hard not to agree with. So they're the negative reasons for REITs, so should we just not invest in them or is this a dark cloud that we can actually see through? This guy is Bruce Flatt, owner of a company called Brookfield Asset Management. Bruce, believe it or not, is considered the Canadian Warren Buffett. This is because he has a similar investment style in the form of value investing, but he has one key difference. Bruce's company has crushed the market for the past 20 years. It's also crushed the market in the past three years, which is incredible for a value investor. This is different to the buff who has largely underperformed the market for the past 20 years, especially in the last 10 years. And guess where Bruce is putting his money? Real estate investment trust. Brookfield has 38% of their portfolio in real estate. Currently, the S&P 500 is trading at a 45 multiple. That is ridiculously expensive, but REITs are largely only trading at a 17 multiple. This seems to be all due to the story of rate increases and the fact that everyone else is buying Bitcoin and Tesla and God knows whatever else. But Bruce has been on the ground watching his properties and he sees it differently. Because probably the greatest discount out there between what you would see as uh, uh, value and price, price versus value, uh, is in uh, real estate securities. Now, first, a lot of the real estate securities that trade out there don't have real estate that is maybe the quality that I'm talking about, but even the ones that do are trading at enormous discounts to their uh, tangible value. And I think that's because the narrative today by the common media, for what it's worth, is uh, very negative. They're very negative about office sure. and very negative about retail. And to the extent it's not just the media. That, that's the, the, to, to some degree, the media are a reflection of common perceptions. Yeah, and I think common perceptions are that. They're wrong, but the common perceptions are that, and therefore that's why values are trading that. And I'd say one of the great um, value purchases today, which is buying real estate securities in the marketplace because you're buying them at fractions of what you trade them at in the private sector. And then there's real estate as an inflation protection, as the money printer just keeps on printing. Fiscal stimulus has caused all asset prices to inflate. That includes real estate. 
especially houses. Jesus, the housing market right now is absolutely insane. But there's two things that happen in this inflationary world. While inflation pushes asset prices up, it also pushes interest rates up as well. And that's the scenario if you believe interest rates are going up considerably. But Bruce Flatt is pretty skeptical on that. So on the value side, we're finding uh, uh, opportunities to put money to work. But on the growth side, which are often smaller dollars, um, there are still significant uh, opportunities. And the, the real thing, and we haven't talked about it here, uh, Carol, but mm -hmm. the real thing is interest rates have gone to zero and they look like they're not going up in a substantial way for a long period of time. And as a result of that, and once the clutter clears from real estate and the, the as Rob said, the shift has changed a lot in uh, the views of real estate. Once it, once it takes its final shift, people are gonna realize that these are among the great investments in the world to own. Also, income investors, particularly retirees or even pension funds, do require some form of safe income. Historically, bond yields are what provided that income. During the 80s, investors and retirees just sat on 14% interest rates. Right now, in the UK, we're at 1.29% at the most. And pension funds, while they are invested in equities, do need a little bit of safety within income. Brookfield believe that while interest rates will rise, they won't rise that much. And pension funds are going to have to go into slightly more risky investments. And one of those biggest investments, which provide income, are going to be real estate investment trusts. And Bruce believes that it may be a 60% allocation by 2030. And then we get to the crux of it, overcompensation. Because Zoom and Amazon have taken over the world, apparently real estate is valued really low. And Brookfield believe that this is an overcorrection and there are so many opportunities in the market right now for real estate that he's just buying everything. Because we've done a lot of stories, certainly here at Bloomberg, about people leaving Silicon Valley, that the big tech companies are saying you can kind of work anywhere. Bruce, who is it that's going to be in demand for office space? Is it the same as it was pre-pandemic in terms of what we see post-pandemic? What, what signs are you seeing? Look, I think the one thing that people have... Um... Uh, forgotten about when they think of office space is normally uh, workforces, the GDP of the world grows and you need more space to house people. And what happens when you have a slowdown is that nobody builds buildings and there really hasn't been anything globally launched for 18 months, which means that this, the, um, the amount of buildings coming on is just getting less and less. And over time, what you're going to see is demand come back uh, and the amount of supply diminish, which means that um, you're going to have a whole cycle start over again. And uh, there's, our, our view is that, um, you know, this is very positive uh, for real estate longer term. Uh, and, um, and we're continuing to invest globally. And you can see it in each of the markets that open up. You start to see cap rates come down because people understand that the offices are going to be full again. And uh, and if you don't understand the business or people aren't in the business, they, it's maybe hard to understand. But um, but it uh, that is really what's going on at the ground level. Now, it is hard to agree with him that people are going to flood back to offices. I don't think so either. But Bruce does have a good point. Everyone's scared of building office buildings right now. And in the past 18 months, nothing has been built as far as offices go. Residential buildings are doing very well right now, and that's because of low inventory. What Bruce is suggesting is that nobody is building office buildings, which means, first of all, people are still going to be looking for offices, but there aren't going to be many out there. There won't be any new ones at least, which means everyone has to pick and choose from what is already there, and there isn't enough. And this should inflate asset prices and keep tenancy rates high. And that is a valid way of thinking about it. And I, for one, am not going to be putting my money into bonds. My portfolio currently sits at 31364, and I have quite a few REITs in my portfolio. And these REITs are all very, very different. Realty income is the famous monthly dividend payer, which has triple net leases on things like restaurants and small stores, generally stores which are quite isolated, not malls or offices, that sort of thing. And in the UK, I have Seagrow, which is well overvalued. And I also have Tritex Big Box, which I don't think is particularly overvalued right now. These two companies are both logistics warehouses, which tend to work for Amazon, 
FedEx, UPS, and we know that those companies have benefited heavily from the past year. But everyone knows about these companies, that's why their prices are high. Bruce is a value investor, a bit of a contrarian, and he tries to find companies that people aren't looking at. And he's trying to find companies that are in good quality office space, or that are in companies that are classed as office space, but they're not really. Alexandria Real Estate is a very famous office space REIT, but it's not actually office space, it's laboratories. Employees have to go to laboratories. You can't be handling DNA and chemicals in your bathtub. So while this is classed as an office REIT, it's not necessarily office space. It's not stupidly overvalued right now, but it is overvalued. Cyrus One appears to be a popular data center REIT on the Discord. Could be a little bit of room for buy-in here. This is a REIT market with an extremely strong tailwind, and Brookfield knows this too. And also medical REITs like Medical Properties Trust is one I'm very seriously looking at right now. Medical Properties Trust owns hospitals. It owns a lot of the standard hospitals in the US, but it's also global and it owns a lot of private hospitals here in the UK. Potentially with that ever-growing dividend, Medical Properties Trust could be around 10% undervalued right now. So in my portfolio, I might follow a little bit of Brucey and try and start thinking about REITs. It's possible that REIT fears are overblown. There's a lot of people waiting to deploy some serious cash into REITs. And also there's nowhere else to get income. Going forward, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market that can be taken advantage of. REITs have been through all the crashes, but REITs have always recovered and always outperformed the market. I'm so surprised that the FIRE community hasn't picked up on this. Real estate investment trusts seem to outperform the market quite safely. As usual, past performance does not guarantee future results, but if you're listening to Bruce who's outperformed the market for the past 20 years, there might be a really good opportunity here. Thank you very much for watching everyone. The investment app that I use is called Trading212. If you wanted to get into investing and you wanted to sign up to a waiting list, you can sign up through a link in the description below. When you sign up through that link, you and I both get a free share. If you can't wait that long, why not try eToro? eToro is another investment app which I use quite often, especially to buy cryptocurrencies. If you sign up to eToro through my link in the description below, you really help out the channel. Also, feel free to check out our completely free Discord. I've just put a couple of the REITs that I've been looking at into the Discord to see what others think, and they found exactly the same problems that I did, which is really cool. Also check me out on Instagram where I will be sharing a lot of the slides that I use for my videos. In particular, I'm looking at Future Meat and Lab Grown Meat right now. Tyson Foods is my one for Lab Grown Meat. But I also share a lot of other information as well, including information on our Playing Footsie podcast, which release every Sunday. You can see that on YouTube, just search for Playing Footsie. And in that podcast, you get a lot of our honest opinions about different things in the stock market, different investors, and also a little bit more of an insight into what we're thinking about stocks right now. Thank you again for watching everyone. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and don't forget about REITs. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up.